Well, now, look, I find this story today very disturbing. It can best be summed up by asking whether science is outstripping ethics. It's almost 18 years since I first noted an extraordinary story that women seeking fertility treatment could one day be offered donor eggs grown from the tissue of an aborted foetus. Where that experiment has gone, I don't know, but you get the drift. A baby could be born from an unborn mother. In that research all those years ago, 18 years, we were told that ovarian tissue had been removed from seven dead foetuses and kept alive in a laboratory for four weeks. The egg-producing follicles in the tissue continued to develop normally but didn't reach a stage where they released a healthy egg cell. One of the scientists at the time working on the experiment said the study could help solve the worldwide shortage of donor eggs for fertility treatment and medical research. Now, I've gone, I've gone on for years about the extent to which science can exceed the willingness of the public to accept its outcomes. There have to be ethical and moral limits. At the time, a lecturer in fertility at the University College in London, I thought had it right when she said, quote, we have to be extremely careful before research is done into this. From a research point of view, these eggs could be valuable, but most people would be disturbed. They're already disturbed about abortion, said the lecturer in fertility, a woman. Quote, I would be very troubled by this, not only for ethical reasons, but by psychological reasons, because what is the public going to think about where these eggs have come from? Now, I've raised the issue many times of public consent for this sort of research. Well, today we're told that in a Monash University laboratory, living models of human embryos have been grown from skin cells. In other words, no need for fertilisation. It is then said that the, quote, models would not survive beyond a stage mirroring the first two weeks of human development, let alone grow into a foetus. But nonetheless, the scientists are saying they could provide the world with an unprecedented chance to overcome miscarriage and infertility because the human embryo could be grown from skin cells. To be fair to the lead researcher, Professor Jose Polo, whom I asked on the program tonight, but he's unavailable, he said these human embryos can't be used to reproduce human life. But is that the next step? After all, the professor says, quote, it will allow us to do so many things we can't even dream about. Does he mean like producing babies without fertilisation? Does he mean producing donor eggs grown from the tissue of an aborted foetus? Any sensible discussion is lost in a stream of unintelligible medical jargon so that scientists can plough on independently of public concern. The Monash research team say that all experiments comply with Australian law and international guidelines. That may be so. I would suggest that the science is most probably way ahead of existing law and guidelines. Do current global guidelines in relation to embryo research cover these developments? The scientists justify this by saying they'll be able to examine why many pregnancies fail so soon after fertilisation. But those who make the law need to answer some questions raised by the public. Will a human embryo created from human skin cells one day replace what we know as fertilisation? Will women seeking fertility treatment ever be offered donor eggs grown from the tissue of an aborted foetus? Will the science for embryo gene therapy one day be such that you can technically and scientifically order the child you want? It seems to me that scientists are inhabiting a world of their own, independently of government, completely without public consent and with no explanation to the public of the consequences of what they're doing. It's government's job to make sure that ethical and moral issues are addressed and that scientists are told they can't drive their way through the door of scientific convenience. What are your thoughts? I suspect you're as worried as I am that science gets way ahead of our willingness to embrace its outcomes.